I've been a volunteer uh, in the Bureau for, for almost 10 years. I'm 75. I was a miner for around about 20 to 25 years. Okay, so we just complete that form, then we'll, we'll go from there. And my daughter's on reception. I've also got a grandson that, um, that volunteers here on a, on a Wednesday. He's still at school. Number two, please. Number two. We've got about 100 volunteers um, and about 50 paid staff now. The Bureau has had a massive increase in the people coming in, in to see it. In the last three or four years, we, we've had a 300% increase in the people using the service. We have handed our tickets out today. Okay. Um, we can offer you some information if you'd like. You know, a lot of the people in the waiting room have just had one or two instances of, of bad luck. And, and actually, they're finding that perhaps the state isn't there to help them through the, a few months or a couple of years of, 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 of struggling to, to help them get back on their feet. Today I'll possibly see ten people. Okay. Are you getting pension credit at the moment, or is this a? No. There could be all manner of things that they've come in for: relationships, debt, benefits. We will help you. Uh, we can do that. All right. Yes. I like stress and uh, work. I couldn't imagine life without something, some work to do. It just keeps me going. Hi Mary, just to let you know your client's here. Okay, thank you. Bye. I think what you're receiving at the moment is a disability living allowance and what you need to be receiving on top of that is employment and support okay. allowance. I've been a caseworker in Coventry CAB for about 23 years. So what have, have they said anything about what the... They just take it month by month, they'll be fair. Okay. So, cause, which is ideal for me because too much goes in here that I can't. I can't store it, but no. I need to. <laughs> no, of course not. It's a lot well, basically, um, I got cancer of the prostate, uh, and that has travelled to my spine, um, and that's damaged my spine now. I went for chemo. I carry on working, so I worked for six months, and taking the chemotherapy as well. Like, um, but that is mind blowing. That really knocked me back. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, the time it was June, I just didn't know me, I didn't know anybody at the end of the day. Even come down to um, suicidal. So we're going to say that you do want to claim income related employment uh -huh. and support allowance as well. It means you're not working anymore um, and being such an independent person like, um, that really hurts. Um, and I've always worked and I've worked hard all my life. Do you know how much rent you pay? 119. Is that weekly? Weekly, yeah. I've got nothing coming in there. Um, everything is going out, um, and I'm really stuck. If it, you know, if it weren't for uh, sort of like Mary getting me straight, I, w I would never know where to start or what to do. To be fair, I'd probably be on the street now. So, the declaration is saying that you, the information that you're given, is correct and complete. I'm. Um, working with clients who have cancer. Trying to see them from the beginning to the end and making sure that any benefit entitlement has been paid. Is there any change in your circumstances? Rob's not getting what he's entitled to at the moment. I think the benefit system doesn't meet the needs of people with cancer. Any other benefits? I again? don't at the minute, no. no. Like we have had cases where people haven't been paid the correct benefit while they're alive and then die and then obviously we carry on so it's paid to their families but it just seems wrong that the person who was entitled didn't actually receive it in their lifetime. One change we are seeing is people in work are really struggling and, and actually people in work, often the jobs around at the moment are short term jobs, fixed term contracts, agency work. Number 10, please. We're getting more and more people come into the Bureau requiring uh, food vouchers because of the high cost of energy bills and so forth and so on. They're not being able to, um, uh, to have money left at the end of the week to, uh, to get food.
We found that we had a number of clients coming in week by week who kind of just needed 20 pounds, 10 pounds to get them through the weekend. It might be that there was a delay in decision on their benefits or they just needed some food or they needed a, something for their electricity meter or something like that. The staff at the Bureau uh, a couple of years ago created a, a small hardship fund um, that they raised money for through sponsored walks and raffles so that we could meet that immediate need, that immediate gap. I hope people don't think that's big society because I don't think that's what big society should be about. That's what the state should be about. Um, but, I, but people just do it because that's what's needed. We're always trying to expand the outreach to try and make sure that we're getting to people who really need us and you know, not everybody having to queue to get in every morning. And people with cancer, a lot of them are receiving treatment, so we see them at the hospital and in their homes, whatever makes it easier for them, really. How are you? A bit poorly. Yeah. So what's been happening since I last saw you? I got talking to the hospital. Julianne, um, when I met her, um, she'd been trying to claim disability living allowance and she had tried unsuccessfully to claim the benefit herself. So I went out and completed the applications and then luckily she did manage to get the benefit. But it was a real struggle for her. So what about the bathroom? Can you manage to get to them? I can't get upstairs to the bathroom. I was asking people for their help to fill in forms and they didn't have the time of day for me at all. I told them I had cancer and they said, well, it's not my problem that you have cancer, that I'd have to do the forms myself. And what age is they didn't show no appreciation or anything. It felt like I was having a nervous breakdown. I had to go, as I said, I had to go to the GP and they had to put me on antidepressants and everything to help me because I was just break down tears. Is there anything else you need other than clothing? Just a bit of support. I'm on chemo, but it says that I'd have only like three months to a year to live, which really hurt me in a way because I would have thought they would have tried to help me even more. But it's really hard. On page one, that's David. Looks after me for at least 35 hours a week. I wanted to get my child benefit and my. Um, child tax credit over into my partner's name so when I do pass away um, it will it will have the money there for the children to give them support and everything. So do you have any carers, anybody coming in or are you just... No, David does it. Oh, and do you want to be happier with me. that rather than... Yeah. I prefer people that I know than yeah. that I don't know. Okay. I still so can't I cope with it now. I'm finding it hard to come to terms with what's happening to me. I'm really, really scared. The wet and dry paper is on my desk, OK? If you haven't got goggles, they're over here as well. In looking at ways in which we can get to people earlier and the service reach further out into the communities, we've developed a partnership with a number of schools in Coventry. We've worked with staff in the schools to train them to support clients and parents of the children that go to that school. And then they can refer those clients into the, the Bureau for advice if they need it. Make sure it's an advice though. So now we've got 35 or so schools now working with us on the project. Ooh. Right, just be careful. You have to keep going, just be very careful. Who have my pen, Matt? We've dealt with probably about 50, 51 parents in all. We've, we've dealt with probably five or six members of staff, we've dealt with pupils. It could be something as minor as they need a bus pass, see if they can apply for a bus pass and I'll help them fill out the application, down to getting an eviction stopped. All confidential. Well, it started off, um, it was around January last year, and I was very depressed. And I'd got a daughter who was at school, who was missing a lot of school through my fault, because. You know, I wasn't motivated enough in the mornings to get her up, get her ready. And I'd been gambling. I'd um, just got myself into so much debt, I was being threatened with eviction. Constantly worrying about all the bills and how I'm going to, you know, sort this eviction out and where was we going to live, what was we going to eat. It got to the point where if I ever had any money, 
I knew if I left the house that I would go and gamble. Um, I can't explain what makes you do it because there is no reason. It's just, it shut the world off. Uh, the school first got in touch with me over my daughter's absences. Just quickly realised there was something wrong at home. They brought me in and they got a citizen's advice appointment for me, which then helped me to start to get my life sorted. Everything was confidential. I felt that I could open up. I actually told them everything that had been going on at home. Um, they helped me with uh, the appointments at the advice. They helped me with food. They managed to get me some help towards bedding and beds, uh, things that I hadn't got. But also they helped me, you know, sort my problems out. They got me into the counselling. They took me to the Gamblers Anonymous meetings. It was just an easier connection for me and knowing some of the teachers and some of the staff from the school. And, you know, to have them to help me was great. So that's a minute for each one, OK? I want you to come up with three new things that you didn't know, OK? When you, uh, Since when you, uh, we have lessons, been delivering this programme of close working with families, and that includes our partnership with Citizens Advice Bureau, our basic measures of attainment, so if you like 5A star to C, including English and Maths, they've doubled. But perhaps the most significant thing is the impact that it's had on attendance and persistent absence. So our attendance has risen from 89% to 96%. Think about what we've just seen. My life has completely changed around now. My daughter's doing really well in school. I've just got us a new house, start a new job next week. And I'm going to go back into full-time employment which is what I was originally doing, <laughs> so they saved me basically, that's the truth, get all emotional, <laughs> that's what they